Dr. Shepard, I always appreciate your teachable moments. I feel like every time you come and talk to me, you at least drop quite a few teachable moments. But I want to talk about the third point in your article, and that's impacts are not dots or lines on a map. Can you break that down for us? I can, and I often, I guess, preach this even when storms are approaching the eastern coast as well. Uh, that cone of uncertainty, that cone that you often see presented on the internet or on your local television show or the Weather Channel, uh, it shows sort of this cone that the hurricane path is likely to take. And oftentimes people uh, mistakenly just focus in on the line down the center of that cone or those little dots down the center of the cone and say, oh, well, that's where the impacts are going to be. No, these storms aren't dots or lines. They're they're actually large systems cover hundreds of miles in some cases. And so uh, when you see that cone, what that cone actually means is there's about a 66% chance that the center of the storm can be anywhere in that cone. It's probabilistic. It's not deterministic. It's not just a line. And so, uh, you know, it's just something, you know, even though the, the storm was sitting over at one point last night, I think over Los Angeles, the rain was extending well out into the east of Los Angeles and perhaps even as far east as Las Vegas. And so it's just important to understand what the cone actually means and that those impacts are not just in the center of that cone. This was Southern California's uh, first tropical storm in more than eight decades. So is this a once in a lifetime storm or should residents in this region really brace for this type of incident to happen more frequently? Well, yeah, I, I, and I wrote about this in a, a previous Forbes article. There was another storm that made landfall in 1939. Uh, some call it the Long Beach storm, tropical storm. Uh, there have been other storms, tropical storms, that have impacted the region but did not make landfall or have as direct an impact as these two storms that we're talking about. Uh, I, I, you know, climate change is real. I write about climate change all the time. We know it's happening and it's affecting our weather. Uh, I'm not ready to sort of pin this to climate change per se because we have seen storms in that region before. But I will say that much of the oceans, whether they're in the Pacific or the Atlantic, Brittany, have been anomalously warm this year uh, due to climate change, due to El Nino and some other things. And in fact, even as you and I are speaking right now, the Atlantic hurricanes are really ramping up. There are four or five systems that we are watching right now uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. I think there are a couple of named storms already. and I think we're, that we're about to get another named storm in the Gulf of Mexico that will likely make landfall in southern, east, south, southern Texas or even Mexico. So I may be writing something on that in the coming hours or days because the Atlantic Hurricane Basin is quite active right now and right on cue. It's mid to late August. The peak of the hurricane center uh, uh, season is around the second week of September. So we usually do see a ramp up uh, in late August and right on cue we're seeing it. And NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has projected an above normal uh, hurricane season in the Atlantic. So we got to, you know, it's kind of an anomaly to be watching a hurricane or a tropical storm in California, but now we've turned our eye to where we usually expect them and it's quite active. Well, when that happens, I do hope you come on and break those storms down for us. But in the meantime, what should California residents do who might not be used to this type of rainfall? Because this is a once every few decades incident. Yeah, that's right. You know, it, it is a sort of a this, the recurrence interval on these things is fairly uh, low. Uh, whether we'll start to see more of these types of events in that region remains to be seen. I, I am concerned about warming sea surface temperatures over time, but again, it's a little too early to make such connections. But it's just important for California residents, people in the Southwest to monitor their local authorities. Make sure you follow your local National Weather Service office. Every region, every area has a National Weather Service office and they uh, put out alerts and information is quite uh, uh, useful. Uh, you can't rely on your phone app in these types of situations. You've got to get detailed information from uh, more expert sources in these high impact, uh, rapidly evolving scenarios. So make sure you understand what your National Weather Service office is, who, who it is, find them on social media. Uh, also have you know emergency kits in place and have what I call the night plan. Always before you go to bed, have a good understanding of what the weather scenario is where you are. And that, that's good advice in any type of weather situation, not just these tropical ones. 
Well, I appreciate that, Dr. Marshall Shepard, per usual. I really appreciate you coming on. Even though when you do come on, like you said earlier, it's not usually a good time. I appreciate the insight you provide to the viewers. Oh, it's off. Uh, thank you for having me. And it's important to, you know, convey this information because we'll face these things again. And so I'm happy to have the platform if you allow to educate people on some of these topics. And some of it is just, gee whiz, I'm a weather geek. And so it's, some of this is just, wow, a tropical storm in California. I mean, that's worth talking about. So hopefully not no one was hurt and we can learn from this as we move forward.